morning, everybody. Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. I'm sorry if I sound a little rough. I'm still trying to get over whatever it is I'm dealing with here. But it's not important right now because we actually do have an enhanced risk of severe weather. And yesterday was actually pretty busy. So like I said, you definitely need to be on guard for all hazards of weather once again. I don't expect this to be a full-fledged outbreak. But as I've said before and as we've seen throughout the course of the year, We've been surprised, so let's make sure we're staying weather aware throughout the day today. We do have this enhanced risk mainly stretched across the majority of the Gulf Coast states here, mainly around the Gulf Coast itself in particular. So we have areas like Lafayette, Louisiana, we have San Antonio, Houston, Texas, also Baton Rouge, Mobile, of course, as you can see here. Then also we have to watch everybody in slight risk like Dothan, Alabama, Tallahassee, Florida, Shreveport, Louisiana, over towards Waco, Texas, and also Corpus Christi. So the main threats for today, the enhanced risk is mainly driven by a wind and hail threat here. We do have areas that are in with, within the hatch risk for hail and wind, such as New Orleans and Alexandria, of course, but in particular around Houston and Austin, San Antonio, you guys are in that increased threat for hail. Wind threat stretches further off to the east here. This is where we get New Orleans into the fold here, along with Alexandria and Lufkin. Tornado threat is not at enhanced risk levels, but it is at a 5% area. It's stretching all the way towards Tallahassee, back towards eastern Texas, I should say. I was about to say western. But we do have a little bit of activity over here that's even possible over towards the Big Bend. And pushing even as far north as over towards Little Rock, Arkansas. Maybe even pushing towards eastern Oklahoma and parts of southern Missouri here questionable as to whether or not I end up going live for this one depends on how I'm feeling and also depends on the time I get off work storms I would anticipate them to get going as we would get later into the evening here this is our troublemaker we talked about this in pretty good detail yesterday just going to do a quick run through as to what we can expect here as far as this low pressure is concerned this is as strong as we're going to see it this is going to kind of deteriorate throughout the day as these storms begin to pop off here. So as we continue to go forward here, of course, we already know our short waves are going to be present. Everything that you would look for with a severe event is going to be here for the most part. The one thing that kind of lacks a little bit, and it's not like it lacks by a major amount, is the low level jet. It kind of picks up later into the evening along with this little area here. But I really think this favors a setup that's conducive to more damaging winds than tornadoes we don't have that uh, south to north flow like we would normally look for when it comes to a severe weather and tornado setup so i'm not expecting a large number of tornadoes i really think damaging winds is going to be that favorable threat in this case and this can persist into the overnight from the looks of it here i mean we already know the situation with our dew points so we'll actually go ahead and skip that we already know that's going to be very muggy over towards this region but one thing that we will look at is our mixed layer cape here. We were mainly looking at how unstable we could be throughout the day today. Storms will probably fire right after lunchtime, I would say. And from what we can see here, there's a pretty good bit of instability, of course, towards Texas. That's going to help aid that hail threat. We're actually going to sneak in a quick sounding here. While it shows the lift index being very strong for tornado threat, and the bases are low it's the wind shear that's going to be the problem here the wind shear is very weak so i wouldn't kind of disregard this in this case you want to look at some of these other parameters here before you get excited saying okay this is going to be a tornado threat <clears throat> but in any case though what i'm mainly looking for is the hail threat and if i look towards these parameters here towards the bottom you see these numbers in the red ship here this is the significant hail index parameter we're at a four. The threshold number is one. So this is exactly what I was looking for. Not to mention we have a we have a lapse rates here that are very steep. That's another good sign for hail here. High amount of cape here. So we're passing all the uh, thresholds here for hail, of course. And this hail analog is showing potential for up to even four inch hail. Not saying that that will happen, but Another good sign that we could see some pretty huge hail over here towards Texas this afternoon. So we get later into the evening. Look at how the instability kind of drops off. And this is also going to help hamper that tornado threat just slightly. 
We do get some instability over here, especially towards New Orleans. We're at about maybe 2,000 joules per kilogram, but it's not, like I said, Cape isn't the only reason we would have a tornado threat. It can't help. But if you look at the shear here, the shear is a little bit better towards the region. It does look like there's a little bit of capping that could hold these storms back. But also the instability. We're barely uh, meeting the threshold here. We're at about 1100. If you have higher instability, it can help these storms become help these storms overcome the lack of shear. But in this case, we're dealing with kind of mid-grade shear and mid-grade cape. So still could be a mixed bag, but definitely not the robust tornado events that we've been seeing in the past, in the recent past, I should say. So I wouldn't be too alarmed with this one, but don't let your guard down. That's really the point that we're trying to drive across here. No need to be too scared. No need to be scared of this system. No need to be too scared of any system, truthfully. Out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick look at what our significant tornado parameter is. I'm not expecting high numbers, of course, as I mentioned before. And, I mean, this pretty much kind of proves it. There's a couple spots over here towards Texas that look a little bit interesting. Like I said, over here, the shear is not very strong, especially towards the low levels, which is a key factor for tornado genesis. And, I mean, you can see it at the hodiograph. And this veer back definitely works against it as well. But... If we were to look for hail, of course, like I mentioned before, parameters are much better for that, even though the lapse rates are not quite as steep either. So what we're trying to prove with this, of course, is to show that just because you may end up getting numbers popping up on the significant tornado parameter, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a violent tornado or a tornado at all. It really just depends on what the atmosphere is looking like at that particular moment in time. Storms are actually going to already be out of this area for the most part by this point from what I'm anticipating. But last thing we'll do is go ahead and take a look at what the radar could look like. And from what we can see here, we have our early morning round of storms. There's actually been a couple of tornado warnings prompted over towards Mississippi during the time of me doing this video. But as we continue to go forward, this is towards lunchtime. We can see rain off to the east here. A couple of stronger storms over towards the Florida Panhandle and the Big Bend here. And then this is our main round of storms that ends up firing. These are going to be our big hailers. And as time goes on, this is going to become more linear. Almost see a little bit of a bow echo developing here. So the threat of damaging winds exists as we get later into the evening here. And this will persist a little bit after the full range of this model here getting into the overnight hours. But I think before midnight, these storms will start to weaken. In fact, I think they'll start weakening before then because of the lack of stability. We'll have to see how things play out. We'll see if we end up going live appreciate everyone's support here trying to do everything i can to keep the videos rolling uh i'll be better soon i don't know how this really came to be i guess it's because we got rained on a few times but in any case though i'll see you guys later whether it's tomorrow or this afternoon but until then have a good rest of your night uh, rest of your day it's tired metalhead weatherman see you soon